Hello everybody and welcome back to the Storm Poker Challenge for MyBet.com. This is Dylan and as promised in this final episode of our Riders of the Storm series, I'll be playing four Storm Poker tables. And before we get there, I'd like to recap the recommended ranges for small and mid-stack play since we will be utilizing the hybrid strategy in the session. And I'd also like to take a quick look at all of our statistics up to this point in the challenge. As covered in the previous videos, this will be our primary approach to the mid-stack play here at the Storm Tables. However, it seems like the minimum buy-in is not 30 big blinds here, but 40 at NL50. So I either looked at that incorrectly, or maybe maybe it's a smaller buy-in amount for um, yeah, NL20 and below. But anyways, at the NL50 tables, it does seem like the minimum buy-in is going to be 40 big blinds, which will change, of course, some of the calculations that we were doing previously. However, all of that still, of course, completely applies as your, your stack size moves up and down from the yeah, now $20 buy-in down to 15. Um, you can have a bit more fold equity with those extra, those extra 10 big blinds. And yeah, it does change things subtly also for expected value, so just keep that in mind. Uh, again, this is going to be our basic strategy, buying in not for 30 big blinds, but for 40 now. Capping back off at 15, um, maybe even maybe even 20. And we'll leave the table anytime we're over 50 big blinds. And that's yeah, the equivalent here of 25 bucks at NL50. And yeah, this is the general playbook that we're going to use. I'm not going to go into any uh, greater detail because we covered that again in the previous videos. If you haven't seen those, definitely check that out. What I may want to do just for fun when we kick it off is play basically the small stack strategy ranges um, typical small stack strategy play for full ring games and that means seven or more players at your table uh, just to see how that works in a six max environment so I think for the first maybe 15-20 minutes I'm gonna play this crazy tight range uh, just so you guys also get a, a feel for how that looks right so we'll be folding everything but jacks are better ace king and under the gun and uh, yeah, nines are better. Ace queen is our the only the only range that we're going to open there from mid. Uh, so called hijack position, cutoff button, and small blind. We're going to open exactly this, and we're not going to get creative at all. And yeah, we'll make it yeah four big blinds for our open raises here, and three and a half more or less um, open raises from these different positions. And that'll be yeah that'll be the initial play, and then maybe we'll expand it um, yeah to the typical tighter full ring mid stack strategy ranges here and then in the end we'll go ahead and loosen it up and see how we see how we do with this range here so guys I've jumped onto two tables here we posted the big blind uh, bought in for 20 posted the big blind um, just got hosed actually with the flop set and the guy turned a yeah, turned a um, turned his his straight we'll look at that here maybe in a minute uh, then we pick up bases here immediately. We make a three bet, as we will, with a lot of different hands here from the small blind versus this guy's steel raise. And take it down uncontested. Okay, and just to finish this entire series, I'd like to look at our statistics up to this point. These would be the heads up stats, the so called HUD stats that you would see in normal ring game play in real time if they were functional, right? Unfortunately, again, at the storm tables as of now, at least mine aren't aren't updating quickly enough on all tables uh, to be useful. But for analysis, after the fact, they're still really, really good. And this is how we ran at 36,000 hands, as you can see underneath here, that's 36K. Um, this 77% here is total percentage that I folded in the big blind total at, versus the steel total percentage I folded in the small blind. And here you guys see this versus steel with the pop-up there. That is, you know, that, that's the breakdown of that. So if you're looking at fold equity again, using stats, that 80 and 77% is the amount that you would then enter here. 
right, in the calculator here for the steals calculator, for example. We've been playing 21% uh, of all hands and raising 15%. So this is a very typical, again, four to three split, you know, three to two uh, that you're gonna see with a lot of tag and lag players. We have stolen ourselves at 26%. So this is the same pop-up as the other two. And this, this whole lineup here is for pre-flop play. All right, so yeah, 26% steal total in the six max environment completely. Um, that means no no full ring hands here, and we've been stealing at 22% from the cutoff, 28 from the button, 30 from the small. Uh, folding to a re-steal is again the fold equity you can assume when you make your three bet, right? That we again covered in great detail in the previous I think four videos of this episode. So yeah, instead of uh, calculating the fold equity like like I've shown you guys, um, you can also just use these HUD stats and as a guess, yeah, guesstimation to the yeah, amount, the percentage you can actually enter here uh, on any given move. Just make sure that you're, you're looking at the right spot, uh, the right stat for the right spot. Okie doke. Underneath this, 5.1 is the aggression factor, and again, yeah, that is probably too high. I think optimal is probably somewhere between 3 and 4-ish, uh, maybe 4.5. And, um, and I know for a fact that that was, that was a bit of a leak, yeah, this 5.1 here, so yeah. That's, that's how that went down. Uh, if you mouse over that, I've got the setup such that you see the aggression factor on all the different streets. And yeah, this versus a miss seabed is underneath there when you're in position and out of position, respectively. This percentage here, or this statistic here is 66%. Uh, that's the average that I'm seabedding on any given flop. And that's the breakdown of that folding to a C bet raise, three betting a C bet raise on the flop, etc. Turn and river, um, yeah. And if you guys aren't familiar with these with these terms, again, see our previous videos, and or yeah, the series that I produced on um, poker math, the essentials made easy. Very good. The 62 is how often we are actually folding to a C bet. It means we're not the pre-flop aggressor, pre-flop raiser, and somebody bets into us on the turn as a continuation bet of pre-flop aggression, we're gonna lay it down here, or we have laid it down on average 62% of the time. So yeah, we're betting about two thirds, we're C-betting about two thirds and also letting it go uh, versus C-bet's about the same amount. Uh, and then there's a lot of different, yeah, a lot of different stats there for the specifics uh, in different, yeah, different scenarios. All right, we have gotten to the showdown 21% of the time and one right at 47, 48% of that only. And we've won, um, when we saw the flop at 47%. Yeah, so going downtown um, about 21% and winning just under half of the times that we get to the river. And underneath here, guys, this 58 is how many times we've attempted to steal a limp pot, 58%. And the following three statistics are for, it's, it's a very comprehensive breakdown of everything's going down on the flop, everything's going down on the turn, not everything, but a lot and a lot of what's going down on the river. So, um, yeah, this underneath is again, one win went to showdown. Went to showdown 21%, one at 47. And what I'm doing on the flop turn and river, respectively. And yeah, you see here, fold to a bet, check raising, uh, total bets on the flop. Um, what I'm doing on the flop as the pre-flop raiser and what I'm doing on the flop as um, against a pre-flop aggressor, a pre-flop pre raiser. So that's how that that's how it looks, guys. Um, you know, check raises, especially on the the turn river and flop, are good numbers to have. And this, you see this number here, this fold to a raise. That's again also at fifty six percent in general, right? You can also plug that in to the EV calculator I showed you guys before as an estimation of what I'm going to lay down on the turn. Right, this is just again, this is just to give you guys a couple of concrete examples of how you can use in the HUD, right, these statistics in the expected value calculations uh, and equity calculations, also in the steel calculator. That's more or less it, guys. Again, yeah, 36,000 hands we played here in the Riders of the Storm series and running, yeah, 21 to 15 V PIP to PFR split, steel raising total at 26%. Going downtown at about 21, winning when we get there at 47. And yeah, these are the respective uh, fold percentages on the turn to any to any given given move, right? On the, on the flop, the turn, and the river. 
and hold a manager has these different icons as you guys see here this cell phone is a calling station for example ABC is an ABC player uh, relatively solid and they defaulted us here to the Eagle icon which yeah, according to the statistics is yeah, optimal for the 6 max environment according to according to their yeah according to their to their standards there how they set that up and how they evaluate that so yeah at least we got the good old eagle stamp i think the stats are looking pretty solid the uh, the main thing that we could do for sure as mentioned also in the beginning of the entire series is reduce that aggression a bit especially post flop uh, and the way to do that the way i plan to do that in the future is to take yeah take a take a few more free cards on the flop in the turn um, when we whiff especially um, try and incorporate more delayed C betting um, stuff like that and yeah maybe reduce especially a big big stack play uh, three bets uh, when we're not when we're not in position right that that seemed to be the biggest um, biggest points of improvement and stuff that you guys can definitely look at uh, in your own games when you're analyzing your your databases there all right and here's a hand of specific example hand that I wanted to show you guys using these calculators. We've got a pair of queens in the small and yeah, I'm already showing this guy's hand but it doesn't much matter. Um, so we post the quarter, he posts 50 cents, action starts. This guy makes a steal raise again guys, 3x raise here from the button and we make a dramatic pause, who knows, yes, 3-bet Resteal, right? So we raise it to five. So more or less, a little over three times his total bet size. And the guy in the big blind makes a re-raise. So just over, just over a min raise here above our bet. And this is a situation, you know. Again, when you have stats, I can come over here and see what he's doing versus a steal in general, right? Um, he's three betting from the big. We've only got an N of 11. So again, guys, a small sample size. I've only got 215 hands on the guy. Um, but he's never three bet from the big at that point. And he has three bet quite a bit, 8% uh, there and 13 hands from the small. So yeah, he's yeah relatively, relatively savvier player, it looks like, um, lag style. And yeah, that's how that's how that looks. So, anyways, he makes a four bet here, so it wouldn't even be wouldn't even be in that category. I would just look at the three bet to kind of get an idea of that. Uh, his PFR, if he's four betting, we see there is four bet range at thirty eight percent and eight hands, right? So he's four betting quite wide. Okay, it's it's again, it's a really small in, and that goes back to the entire yeah point that we were talking about before, where the the larger the in is, the the more you can trust his stats, but. We're already seeing this guy's a pretty aggressive player, uh, knows how to 3-bet, knows how to 4-bet, and that actually quite high, as we see here. Um, good, so that's yeah, that's how that looks. Anyways, I think he's going to be 4-betting also with ace-king, I think he's going to be 4-betting with 10s, uh, jacks, 9s, uh, nice. probably yeah, a lot of pairs actually. And yeah, worst case scenario, he's only 4-betting, let's say, jacks are better ace-king, right, this old standard 3% range. And here's the situation. So small, big post. This guy raises it up to 150. We three bet it to 475 for a total of five bucks. And this guy comes over the top from the big blind to 1050. All right, our call, our call, if we were gonna just call it flat, right, is gonna be the difference here for six bucks. Yeah, so our effective stack then is 5347 minus our bet. And you guys see that when we shove over the top here, this calculator shows us very clearly if we think he never folds, that we need 46%, including the rake, to break even in the long run. And that we have versus a, if we're holding queens here, for example, versus that entire range of jacks of better ace king, we're at 47, so we're good there when he never folds. All right, that's again, that's what this calculator shows you. And yeah, you guys can assume what I did. <laughs> I got knocked off those tables. Uh, we'll jump back in soon enough, but the pot at our point of the decision here, at the point um, where we have to decide, okay, am I going to flat this with queens and then play play a flop without overs, or am I going to go ahead and do what I do here, which is a five bet five bet shove in a steal scenario. All right, so again, this this four bet is going to be a lot wider in a lot of cases, and so. Even again, you know, we've got this 
this equity 47.4% versus a really tight 3% for betting range. And we see that this guy is, yeah, I didn't know that in real time, but um, I assumed it, that he is, yeah, let's see here, he is, they can, yeah, four betting, three and four betting quite wide. So what do I do? I've got a decision. I've got 17.50 in the pot. My effective stack, including the bets, is going to be here. Um, 48, 475, this is gonna be five bucks. Yeah, so 53, 47 was at the beginning of the round. My bets, my total bets were five bucks at that point. So 10 big blinds. And yeah, we got a full effective big stack on both sides. Um, dead money less the rake is gonna be here. Small blind, this guy's one and a half, right, in our Total of five. I guess 475. Right, because that's including the small blind. Alright, and we've got here then the reg itself is gonna be another three bucks. Oh, that should be a plus. And yeah, we take the rake out, so here we go. That's the dead money we can pick up. Um and we assume our equity with queens versus that tight range to be at 47.4%. Uh, we assume that he never folds when we jam. All right, we're still making, a, what, three blinds here. Every time we make that shove, unfortunately, as variants would have it, this is called the so-called bad matchup, guys. Uh, he, you know, he gets it in good, but again, versus the entire range, um, yeah, queens are real strong here, so good. I shove. <laughs> And his final call, as you guys see here, he needs, he's getting pot odds of 1.55 to 1. So to break even again, he needs 39% equity when calling all in. And yes, so that's yeah, very similar here to our 40. And so we go ahead and pop it. He calls it, pot's 108.94. Uh, looks like I probably put the big blind. Yeah, the dead money is. Yeah, it looks like we're off by about 50 cents. So yeah, anyways, one of these buttons were, were missing his uh, yeah his big one. That's why there's a subtle discrepancy there. But anyways, yeah, he flats us. Um, here it comes and no dice. I just want to show you guys that as a um, yeah, shove example. Using these calculators again, the expected value, uh, equity calculators, how you guys can, yeah, again, use total estimated ranges versus your holding to have a really, really good idea of exactly where you stand. And, and just to wrap this up, guys, here with the minimum buy now of 40 big blinds here, we've got an effective stack. If we're in a steel scenario again, we raise it up to one and a half, kind of like this guy did here. Um, get a re-steal up to 450 from the big, let's, let's say. Our call is gonna be then four, and that's now the updated breakdown of how that's gonna look in steel scenarios when you're when you're buying in for a, a full 40 big blinds in mid-stack play. Um, pot at the point of the push, we decided four bet shove is gonna be 675. Our effective stack at the beginning of the round again, guys, is 20 bucks. Uh, bets or blinds here we've posted at 150. The dead money, is going to be the rate's going to be about 225 when I shove uh, for 40 big blinds and get called here at NL50 with maybe a, a small blind involved. So that's that's this right here. That's the rake, and the dead money is then yeah the small blind and our initial open raise is a steal. Uh, with the same scenario, let's say we got queens over here. We're going to assume that he's yeah again worst case scenario only three betting jacks better ace uh, ace king. And then folding, you know, again, whatever, maybe half of it, or again, maybe only 30%, whatever you want to call it. Um, so when he never folds, um, we are losing a big blind every time we shove that. When he folds, only a very small percent here, at, at, you know, 7% of that, we're already in the green. All right, so that's, that's the breakdown of that with the updated 40 big blind stacks. And again, guys, just play with that a bit. See how you um, see how you do. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to contact me at any time. And with no further ado, guys, we are into the live action. Um, let's of course fold. 
Yeah, we got active there on the flop with our over pair and play on. So the stats here, guys, uh, again, at this point I'm running a 19-13 split um, for 1.4K they've got listed there. Not sure exactly uh, why that's listed at that, um, that high of a... I have a hand number there. Maybe it included some play from last night. Not sure. Um, all right, brilliant. So now we shove with our aces, right? Come over the top, and we're good. We don't think he's going to fold a lot here. Um, but the more he folds, the more we win. <laughs> Actually, in that case, the more he calls, the more we win since we're so strong. Um, but that's how that's how that's done, guys. So here we are already at 25, right? And again, here we're going to start yeah, this play with... Um, yeah, short stack strategy, the typical ranges here for um, full ring play. And we're already above our 50 big blinds, okay? And that means what you do is now, in, in your real games, in, uh, your, yeah, when, you're, when you're playing online by yourself, um, you can use this hybrid strategy such that um, you play on from here, right? Just adjusting more uh, your ranges and your play into the big stack strategy. Or you can play this very concrete line that we're going to do right now is we're going to check out of this table, right? Because we're above 50 big blinds at this point. There's the jacks. All right. We come over the top, more or less 3x his bet. And here, you know, um, if he comes over the top, we got to call everything here. Um, again, steel scenario, we flop our over pair. Our stack to the pot is more or less 1 to 1, and we jam. That's how it's done, guys. And here I'm going to click the sit out button because if I take this down, I'm going to be again above the 50 big blinds that I'm looking at. All right, so we get in so good yet again, and here comes the ace. Yeah, unreal. Um, wow, we actually we actually pick up the jack on the end. That is just poetic justice. I mean, that's just too disgusting. Uh, he actually flatted us without a draw. I mean, six outer. Um, here we're going to uh, probably check fold this. Um, yeah, so glad that that happened uh, after the miss or shown weakness here we, we represent the ace um, bet into it and he lets it go alright so we've got two tables here right where as you can see here now I'm just under just under normal big stack um, yeah buy-in ranges right so um, what I do now is I check out of these two tables and I jump back in for 40 big blinds and that is the hybrid strategy in a nutshell hit and run, you know, you, you get over the 50 big blinds, you check out and you jump back in. So cancel out of that, cancel out of that, I'll say thank you very much, I put that in the bank, and we're back at it again guys here for 20 bucks, we'll play on. So with that, no further ado, we will begin with the short stack ranges here, and I'll just show you guys how crazy that is, um, concerning how tight you play, and yeah, then we'll expand a bit. Uh, into the mid stack, mid stack ranges as we move forward. And as always, yeah, I'll just be making the commentary um, in real time as we move forward, and the hands get interesting. Um, six to seven, the big fold. And what I've got at my side is, of course, the little recommended ranges. And I'll just flip back here to our small stack range. There they are. Just that I have that at my side, you know. I normally play big stacks, so um, like a lot of you guys. You'll, you'll be going back and forth, uh, checking out your, uh, yeah, the actual list, you know, okay, is that is that hand on the open raising list, is it on the uh, three betting list, jamming list, etc. And here we'll just take a shot, uh, suited queen nine, I fold that if it's all suited, not because the suited is much better, rather, um, yeah, I'm going to play that hand one time in three, or forgive me, one time in four instead of... Uh, three or four times in four. All right, and there she goes again. King-10 could also be a open steel raise suited um, in mid-stack play. But again, we're gonna try and play by the book here. Jack, um, I wish that this wasn't picking up all the other hands, I think from probably last night, um, or earlier today, so that you guys could see how tight this would actually be. Um, but yeah, we can have a quick look at that maybe in a minute. In Hold'em Manager. Alright, so you guys see, what am I doing? 
right? 90% of the time, folding. <laughs> and yeah, that's the small stack strategy, guys. You're not, let's, for example, not a limp call, a fold. Um, it's, you gotta be patient playing the strategy, but I think it's also good for a lot of guys out there. Here, I'll probably find a flat. Um, versus the min raise and just a big check fold. Um, yeah, again, yeah, I'm hitting the uh, check fold buttons because I know it's going down, but uh, I advise against that in general. He bets it out. We can check raise this. Um, he would have missed it too. Uh, check raise is going to look like this, but we're just going to let that go and play our little rocky strategy here. All right, ace king is on the list. So we raise that up. Three and a half big blinds here from the cutoff as a steel raise. Instead of four. And you know, when, when I was playing back in the day, uh, short stack strategy in the full ring environment, I would, you know, my open raises from early and mid were always uh, four big blinds and no deviation from that. And that's a three bet here in position. And um, that, that was supposed to be a three X. Again, watch out for those misclicks, guys. We take that down uncontested. Lovely. Ace nine here we will see bet. Actually again, yeah, let's let's opt for the delayed C bet here. If we get another check, we're gonna have more fold equity on the turn. Problem is any five is now made, right? Um, for the straight. And he checks again, so we take a shot. And here's a resteal with our tens. We take that down and contested. And yeah, again, um, 4x was the open raise um, in the full ring environment, then three and a half coming into coming into the cutoff, and uh, three on the button. And then probably, yeah, three or three and a half, depending on, um, uh, from the small blind, right? Just to compensate there for maybe, maybe a half blind or a full big blind more uh, to compensate for the out of position disadvantage post flop. Uh, here we squeeze the min raiser here, and unfortunately don't get any play. Yeah, so jacks again, ace queen, we will raise up. It's actually, okay, ace king, actually according to this short stack strategy play, that would have been a fold. It's only jacks a better ace king. Here we definitely raise that up. With Mr. Jackson and... <laughs> All right, uh, we raise that, and this guy comes over the top, and we've got a full 16 behind here, um, and I'm just going to let that go. That's part of the craziness. Um, <laughs> queens are better. I come over the top. Uh, I believe we have listed here. Mm, no dice here. And check out. Yeah, so it was a you know it was an early under the gun early position min raiser right here then min raise four bets and I got jacks you know I'm flipping versus ace king and uh, absolutely dominated by uh, a pair of queens or better and yeah doesn't look good for the home team there so we yeah we take a you know smaller three bet shot and he comes over the top and we let that go. All right, Kings, actually we are picking up some decent hands. I guess uh, <laughs> they're feeling bad about <laughs> the run that I had yesterday, <laughs> which was really hard. <laughs> um, so we, yeah, we are picking up some hands here that we can actually play that's nice with the video. And we raise that up, take it down, ace 10 is a big fold, early position. Queen 10, these are the ones, guys, are suited broadways that you can find a complete with when multiple people limp. But if they raise it up, then you gotta let that go. And again, the ace queen versus, or according to short stack strategy as such, in a full ring environment would be a fold. Would be a fold. You start to raise that up in mid position only. All right. And again, here with stats, you know, you can get into a re-steal deal, but this is also a mid-stack player. Hmm. 
<laughs> All right. So how exciting is this? Fold, 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 fold. The, uh, the good thing is that you can also run, instead of just four tables, you can also run six, um, more than likely, because this is such a tight range. That, yeah, once you get, once you get used to it um, on multiple tables, then you can you, you kind of know what you're raising intuitively, right? You don't have to think about it a lot. You don't have to check your, your notes. And you can increase your table size, and um, as such, then, yeah, you uh, kind of decrease the, the boredom <laughs> with all the folds here. Ace jack, guys, uh, middle position, are you on the list? No, it's ace queen or better, and nine's are better. King queen, big fold under the gun. That's what I'm talking about. All right, here we go, and let's make it the 4x, um, which I hadn't been doing, sorry, guys. The open raises should be 4x from... Uh, mid or from under the gun and mid, and then um, yeah, let's say here three and a half from the cutoff, three from the button. Let's see if we can't implement that here as we move forward. All right, looking for that six or just taking down the pot uncontested. Lovely under the gun razor here, ace nine guys, big fold. Oh yeah. Shouldn't be checking that. All right, we're out of here. Sixes again. Watch out. Kings yet again. Wow, okay. So we 3x this guy. As a 3 bet. He 2 bets. We 3 bet. There it comes. You can flat that as a big stack player, but not here at our little 30 big blinds. Okay, and this guy is considering his fold. And he does. Pick up aces again. That's unreal. Um, I'd like to see a raise here from our fellow mid stacky. Ace king, also nice. And here again, um, from the cutoff, let's three and a half it. Let's three it here from the button and make that our standard play. For now. Right. Uh, that's nice. He flatted. We want to see a squeeze here. Ah. Alright, so the inside straight draw and the aces here. And I definitely take a shot here, half pot. Hope he's on like an ace king kind of hand. Um, problem is, <laughs> he might be on pairs of tens, queens, kings, stuff like that as well. Um, that's a relatively dangerous flop there. But, yeah. Take a shot and take it down. Ace three, let's see what happens here. He raised it. It's a min raise this time, guys. So. Again, this wouldn't be short stack strategy by any means, but I'm in position, and uh, I decide for the the min raise there with the suited baby ace to go ahead and see a relatively cheap flop, and um, yeah, swing and miss, and we let it go. Steel raise here from the small. Take it down and contest. This is going to be a three bet versus a min raise here. So three x his raise. And he comes over the top, he jams, so we're right at one-to-one -one plus dead money uh, with the ace-queen, and yeah, that's a tough spot. So we had, the call was uh, tens are better ace-queen, and we actually make that call, and we get it in 70% ahead, that's brilliant. But again, guys, the, the rule there was, the reason to make the flat is because we had that, we were, you know, killing that horse, <laughs> where... Um, you know, we saw that tens are better, ace queen is pretty much going to be our, our call size when we are mid stacked. We get in real well. Um, this guy limps, and now we isolate that instead of just. You can also just complete there, see the cheap flop, um, talking too much, miss the action. <laughs> um, but yeah, we isolate and take that down. And right here, guys, you know, we're not at 25 yet, so we're going to play on. Right? We're going to play on. We're not at 50 B blinds here. And. Yeah, that's the deal. All right, here's going to be a, a flat that's also kind of <laughs> not allowed in the short stack strategy. But we have position, uh, pick up the backdoor flush draw, inside straight draw, and middle pair. More than likely, one of these guys do have the king. We'll have to see what they do. Okay. If it were, I mean, if it were two clubs, I would have definitely bet it, but not with the running flush draw. Yeah. And we minimize our losses there and play on. And again, you guys see, I mean, the, the idea with uh, the no calling there, that would have saved us that cash, right? Um, basically, raise fold, raise fold strategy. So, again, here, that's not suited, so I'm just going to let that go. All right, and here we make a re-steal. 
with our good old big slick and take it down bad beat knows how to fold that's a good thing uh, six is here guys 75 cents um, one and a half hoping that he doesn't raise over the top the problem with making that flat is that he can re-raise but you've got the implied odds here with 40 40 big blinds behind you to call that for set value and we with yet again yeah real real light on the sets lately there comes the ace you know two suited and we're not gonna we're gonna yeah, play this one by the book and without the stats just check fold it a lot of pairs of sixes in this session as you guys have seen all right ace king yet again all right, and from the cutoff, so three and a half is their open raise size. And here we go, we wanna make a squeeze. So I'm gonna go three times the open raise plus one per cold collar to four. One fold, that's a good thing. He flats and lets it go, and that's the power of the squeeze, guys, uh, in steel scenarios. So wider open range, wider calling range, you come over the top and you can do that with a lot of random random cheese as well. All right, 34 is out the doors. 76, also big fold. And we flop our over pair here. Um, half pot it because it's uh, rainbow board. Uh, if that's too suited, a bit more connected, um, then we we'll have to see. He calls it 72 and we flop. That's nice. We turn, turn our uh, trips. So it looks like Variance is trying to pay us back here subtly. Um, now we are good here with our jacks, right? We're over 25 bucks. And what I'm going to do right now is, of course, bank that, right? And jump back in for a new 40 big ones. Here's a lighter re-steal with the 78 suited from the min race. Or versus the min race, set. We'll sit out here, he lets it go, and we take it down. All right, so close that one. Let's say yes, I do. Thank you very much. And off we go. Yeah, the only thing is too. I mean, if you like changing your seats, you know, I like kind of four corner in it here. Um, yeah, you guys can set that up however you like. Yeah, and this is you know this is the um, more or less the short stack strategy approach, um, even at the six max tables, and that's yeah so far that's been working out for us. But you see you know that was um, there were at least two hands there where we got hosed right, and then luckily had a resuck out versus the guy uh, where we got it in so well. So again here you know when you see this kind of hand, if there's action before you, you can go ahead and click the sit out button especially in the storm environment because you know if you double you're going to be checking out right? but we make an open raise so I'm not going to fool with the sit out button right now just to avoid misclicks and the 67 will probably be a steal here um, but this guy raised in front of us so that was it kings are good at 16 and we take a three quarter shot Uh, again, this is Dylan. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it was definitely useful for your game. On behalf of the entire My Bet Poker team, I'd like to wish you all the best, both on and off the felt.